Hey, my name is Jesus Castillo, and in this video, you are going to learn about the basic concepts that you need to understand to write good object oriented programming code in Ruby. Okay, so I have a mind map right here and we're going to be filling in this mind map with the uh, different concepts and ideas and topics inside object-oriented programming, right? So the first thing I want to talk about is poly, poly, mo, poly, more, Polymorphism. Whoops. Polymorphism. What is it? Well, it sounds like a very fancy word, right? Like metaprogramming or other words like that. But it just means a very simple thing. Polymorphi polymorphism is when you can replace one object with another object of a different class and I still make it work and I still make it respond to the same methods. So the key to polymorphism is that you can have two objects of different classes and they have the same method, right? So let me give you an example. You may have a class called book another class called DVD, right? And if both classes define the same methods, like for example, DVDs have authors, books have authors. DVDs has title, and um, books has title, right? If they define the same methods, then they are interchangeable, Meaning that if we have an array of DVDs and books, they, they are mixed together, then we can call the title and the author methods without having to check if the object is of a specific class. So you don't have to say, um, is this object a book or is this object a DVD? You can just call the title and author methods and it will work. So that's polymorphism. And that's a very imp important topic because it gives you more flexibility when you are using different classes, right? So you can combine classes that are similar, that respond to the same methods, so the same interface do we end up with better uh, code, better Ruby code, when you don't have to check what class you are working with in the code, with if statements or whatever. So the next topic I want to talk about is inheritance, which is, well, all of these topics are related, of course, because we're talking about object-oriented programming. So the next uh, topic, the next idea, the next concept is inheritance. And what is inheritance? Well, inheritance is when we have one parent class and a subclass that inherits methods from that class. For example, you might have a fruit, fruit um, class and that would be the parent class and then this fruit class can have subclasses so the subclasses are specialized versions of the parent class so what that means is that fruit is a generic term right fruit there are different kinds of fruits we have oranges we have apples bananas etc well these kinds of Fruits, this would be the classes that inherit 
from the fruit class, right? So we would say that orange inherits from fruit, or apple inherits from fruit. And what it does is that these classes can, since they are related, they are the same thing, they are fruit. That's the linking characteristics, the similar characteristic, is that they, all of them are fruit. They can share um, constants that are on the fruit class, and they can also share methods. Okay, both instance methods and class methods can be shared through inheritance. And then the, every different kind of fruit, the orange, the apple, the banana, they can specialize. And what that means is that they can make changes, small changes to what the fruit does, what this class does, okay? So you want to dig deeper into this topic, I have an article. Use Google for Ruby inheritance. I have got examples in there. So next is composition. And composition is when you use different classes and you put them together to create a bigger class. So this is different. Notice that this is different from inheritance because inheritance you are specializing. It's like a tree, just like this mind map. This can be the parent class, and this would be the subclasses, right? Well, in composition, instead of following that hierarchical model, what we do is we take different components and we put them together. For example, a computer is made from components, right? It has a graphics card, it has memory, RAM, it has a disk, hard disk, or SSD. It has different parts to to make the computer work, right? So that's composition. When you take different classes, then you combine them together to create a one combined class then can do new things that the individual components can do. Next I'm going to define cohesion. Okay, what's this? Well, cohesion is, is an object oriented principle related to class design. Class design. So if you want to create better classes, it's important to understand cohesion. What cohesion says is that all of the methods that you have inside the same class must be closely related to each other. For example, if you have a, a coffee shop, in a coffee shop class, you will want to have methods like prepare coffee and serve coffee and things like that, things that are related to the functions of the coffee shop, right? No, what you don't want is to have completely, completely unrelated things mixed into this class. So the coffee shop probably doesn't need to know how to do other things that are unrelated. Um, for example, coffee shop probably doesn't sell cell phones, for example, or doesn't sell doors, or <laughs> or it doesn't sell, uh, I don't know, lights, or speakers, or mouse pads, right? So you want to look that in, that inside a class, all of the methods are closely related to each other. So they make sense together. And the next principle I have for you is coupling. So coupling and cohesion are often related, are often explained together. Because coupling, what is it? What it is is that 
when an object is very uh, is tied together very strongly to another object. So we talk about composition, right? And um, with composition, you can combine different objects together. Well, what, what can happen when you do that is that your, these objects become coupled. They become strongly uh, dependent on each other. Uh, well, when that happens, you're going to experience some problems with your design and your code. Why? Because when you want to change something in one of the, these classes that are closely linked together, well, it's going to affect both classes. Instead of only affecting one class, it's going to affect both of the classes. So, for example, what coupling looks like in code, so you can look for this, is that if we take this composition approach and instead of telling the graphics card to do its job to print something on the screen, we grab the screen object through the graphics card and then we try to print directly or we try to read something from the screen directly, something like that. So we're trying to do the other object's job instead of telling the object, the other object, what to do. This, so you probably, you might have heard about the tell, don't ask principle. Well, that principle is all about reducing this coupling. Okay. And finally, I'm going to mention one more topic here and that's abstraction. So in abstra abstraction, what does it mean? Abstraction is, it goes in layers and every layer that you go, you are building up and it's more abstract, more abstract, more abstract. So what is it really? Well, abstraction is what we do to reduce complexity, to remove the, the, the details so the user doesn't have to deal to work with the details. It just works with a nice interface. So the interface are the methods that a class has. Uh, for example, when you work with your computer, you don't need to know how to send electrical signals and what electrical signals you need through the components to make it work, right? Because that's abstracted away in the form of the keyboard, the form of the different hardware devices to already know what to do. You just have to type with your keyboard and use the mouse uh, or use the microphone like I'm using now and everything just works. That's abstraction. I don't need to know how to how this microphone works. I just need to plug it in and it works. It's when you're creating a new class, what you're really creating is an abstraction and something. So that's the general idea of abstraction. It just means that we're making something easier in the form of methods. The methods do some work. Um, the user of the class doesn't need to know what's happening inside the methods. So these are the fundamental object-oriented programming that every Ruby developer should know. I hope you found this helpful. If you want to find actual code examples, you can go on my blog. I have examples for inheritance, for polymorphism, for all of these, for abstraction, for copy, for cohesion. I have examples of all of these in my blog, rubyguides.com. Okay. You can scroll down to the bottom and find all posts and you search in there. Or you can go to Google and use Google to find the, the articles with the code examples. So with this video, I just wanted to give you this 
conceptual overview of these concepts. Okay? So I hope that helps you. Please click the like button for me so I know that you like this video. And if you want to keep learning, watch more of these videos now. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And visit my website rubyguides.com rubyguides.com Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.